What do we got on our plate today? Wait, wait a minute. Okay, I think we're good now. Finally, it's December, and you know what that means. Boom! Christmas tree! Boom! Presents! Boom! And of course, the almighty Coco! Now what we need is to top that off with some awesome Christmas cartoons. Now last year I said there are a handful of Christmas specials I'm required to watch every year. Well, that list is a little bigger than five. Um, yeah, it's more like 48. So here's five more. Chowder is, um... Okay, Chowder is weird. Chowder is really fucking weird. I mean, come on, the main character has a pet that's a sentient fart cloud. We also have a rock monster, a mushroom fairy, and whatever the hell this thing is. And all of this makes for the weirdest Christmas special I'm aware of. So in this universe, they celebrate Kanishmas. Just roll with it. So on this holiday, everybody makes a big schmingerbread house for Kanish Kringle, who breaks into people's houses, eats their schmingerbread house, and then coughs up presents. Literally. Just go with it. But if your schmingerbread house sucks, then he breaks all of your shit. Did I mention this show is weird? It starts with a cliche as Chatter is seen with his chubby face pressed against a window display of... a pair of shears. Don't worry, if you don't understand this, Chatter explains what they are a thousand times. Electric broccoli trimmer with detachable non-electric cauliflower trimmer! Electric broccoli trimmer with detachable non-electric cauliflower trimmer! Gotcha! Electric broccoli trimmer with detachable non-electric cauliflower trimmer! An electric broccoli trimmer with detachable non-electric cauliflower trimmer? Bye! Problem is, Mum can't make a good schmingerbread house, so Chatter won't get his shears. Mung then has to swallow his pride and buy one from Endive, his hated enemy. Chowder stops Kanish Kringle from eating the house so Monk can be happy and he's so moved that he gives Chowder his shears. I'll be honest, this is my palate cleanse before I dive into the richness of the holidays. I love this one for the same reasons I love the rest of the show. It's completely bonkers and seeing a show with the so crazy take a shot at the biggest holiday of the year just makes me smile. <laughs> Yes, I'm a sadistic fuck, and I think this shit is fucking hilarious. Now, when I went looking for clips from this one, I found out that a lot of people hate this one, and personally, I don't get it. So in this episode, Dexter Boy Genius is convinced that Santa isn't real, and it's just his mom and dad trying to pull a fast one on him and his sister. So this year, he's out to prove that Santa is just fake. Uh, at first thought, I'm thinking, oh hey, he's gonna set up some Home Alone style traps and try to catch Santa, and he's gonna fail miserably, and slapstick will ensue. But then I remembered that this kid has an IQ equaling that of a plot device, as well as a seemingly endless supply of resources and space in which to break the laws of reality. So instead of silly kid traps, we get Dexter blowing Santa out of the sky in an SR-71. Okay, I can see why some people might have a problem with this one. It is a little messed up to see a 12 year old physically attacking Santa, and yeah, this face right here is pretty fucking scary. But I think there's more to this episode than people see. Think about it. Kids his age are pretty stubborn, and let's face it, we all knew that one kid growing up that went around telling everybody that there's no Santa. Now, all the creators of the show did was take those ideas and use them within the confines of the world that they had created. 
But instead of a little kid making childish traps, we get one with the means and the drive to go to any lengths to prove he is right. But then again, I'm a sadistic fuck. I'm just gonna play this. Jingle bells, Batman smelt, Robin laid an egg. The Batmobile lost the wheel, and the Joker got away! Horse open tree, busting out I go, laughing all the way. <laughs> I can't think of a more Christmassy way for the Joker to do anything. This alone is enough to watch this episode. Not to say that the rest is bad, I mean, hey, it's Batman the Animated Series. The rest of the episode is pretty basic, with the Joker hosting his own live Christmas TV special, complete with ugly sweaters and Batman trying to stop him. This is the perfect thing to watch if you don't take the holidays too seriously. That's all I really got. Moving on. Okay, before I move on to the number two pick, I want to make one thing clear. My next pick is an episode of South Park. It is not that episode. I am not going to talk about that episode. I may be messed up, but no. Now, for a show having such wonderful Christmas specials like Merry Christmas Charlie Manson, Red Sleigh Down, and that episode, this one is pretty tame. Instead of getting some kind of story or social commentary, we get the characters of South Park singing pretty faithful renditions of famous holiday songs. Kyle sings Dreidel, 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 Carmen sings Oh Holy Night, and my personal favorite, Mr. Mackey sang all four parts of Choir of the Bells. Now don't get me wrong, not all the songs are nice and sweet, this is South Park. We get Hitler singing Oh Christmas Tree, which leads to Satan singing Christmas Time in Hell. So you celebrate the birth of the son of your mortal enemy. Neat. And of course, it wouldn't be a South Park Christmas episode without a heaping dose of racism, courtesy of Mr. Garrison. Tyler, Mr. Shintoist, Merry fucking Christmas! God is gonna kick your ass, you infidelic pagan scum! Like Christmas with the Joker, this one is for people who don't take the holidays too seriously. Okay, so I'm really close to cheating on this one, since this one merely takes place at Christmas rather than be about Christmas. But hey, if people are going to call Die Hard a Christmas movie, I think I can get away with this. So it's Christmas time in Critterville, and we follow an old squirrel as he goes to visit his family for Christmas while carolers sing Peace on Earth outside. The old squirrel's grandchildren are baffled by the line, Good Will to Men in the song, because they've never seen a man before. The old squirrel then talks about how man wiped itself out from fighting. This is a fascinating short. The idea of man wiping itself out through the eyes of animals that lived on after us is, while not new, is used in a way here that is both serious and comical. When they describe what we look like, they only ever saw soldiers in battle gear, so we looked like monsters. As I remember the critters, they was, uh, well, they was like monsters. They wore great big iron pots on their heads. They walked on their hind legs and they carried terrible looking shooting irons with knives on the end of them. And their eyes flashed. And they had tremendous big snoots like this that curled down and fastened onto their stomachs. But on the other side, it pokes fun at our habit for finding stupid reasons to fight started a shooting at the buckwheat people, and the vegetarians began to fight the meat-eating people. And There's even a pretty dark depiction of the death of the last human being shot and then sinking into the trenches. Now it's not perfect. It does get a little heavy-handed with some of its messages. Thou shalt not kill. Hmm. 
Looks like a mighty good book of rules. But I guess them men didn't pay much attention to it. It finishes with the grandpa squirrel telling his family that they sing peace on earth in remembrance of us and what we did to ourselves so that they won't do it to themselves. Now I feel like some of you are thinking, but Clapper, why is this the top one? It's just some old anti-war propaganda that happens to have Christmas themes. Well, that's the thing. I was originally going to make this my number five, mainly just as a filler. I mean, it's well animated, the voice acting's good, and the premise is pretty interesting. But as I started to do more research on this one, I came upon a single fact that changed my entire perspective on this short. And that was its release date. This short originally aired on television on December 7th, 1939. Only three months after Hitler's invasion of Poland and the start of World War II. After finding that out, I realized what this short really is. It's someone's last desperate plea for everyone to stop before things got out of hand. And they did get out of hand. The creators of the short realized that Christmas is one of those things that's celebrated around the world. And even during World War I, there was a winter where everybody stopped fighting on Christmas and some even resisted going back to fighting. Whoever made this short really wanted to recapture that idea and hopefully prevent another world war. Unfortunately, he failed. So to me, that makes this my top pick for the year, and I beg anyone who is watching this right now, please check it out. It's nine minutes long, and it's all the time it needs to pull out your heartstrings. On earth, good will to men. See, this is what I like my Christmases to be. Well, hey, Clockwork, before we go, I got a couple presents for you. Really? Check under your seat. You know, I feel like you're trying to make fun of me, but you fail because these are awesome. Well, I also decided that I'm not going to piss you off this year. Really? Nah. I'm just going to scar you for life instead. What? <laughs>